You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Holt. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Andy, what's up, brother? Good, man. Back in studio, feeling the flow. Do you smell that? I smell the, the the air of innovation is the in air of you innovation. Smell, yeah, you hear that? Is that kind of like a it? new car smell? When you it is kind of like a new car smell. Yeah. It is, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I also have this other sound I want to play for you. I don't know if you can hear that, but that is innovation. That's the sound of footwear innovation. That also sounds like my wife when she's trying to squeeze my neck and it keeps <laughs> going in about something I've done. That's there. every day. That's making me very afraid right now. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? This is the Nike Hyper Dab. I've talked incessantly about getting a pair of these since the show started, since right. they debuted, and I have a pair right here in my hand, and for the whole world to see. I'm it's very like a excited. Robo about it. Shoe, huh? it is. It's awesome, isn't it? It is very cool. Jasmine, what do you think? I think they're cool. I can't wait to talk about them. Yeah, I'm really excited. What, what Matt didn't know they're is cool Matt, Matt was out the other week, and Jasmine was actually walking around the office. She was. Like yeah, dads. my size 12s. Yeah. <laughs> right. and my size six and a half. <laughs> we actually took packing tape from our Amazon boxes and stuffed the front. Uh, I, I, so I believe it. I believe it. No in our <laughs> office. I believe that, man. But I can't tell you how excited I am, Andy, because we have Tiffany Beers, who is the lead innovator at Nike and on the Nike Hyper Dap and the 2015 Nike Mag. Tiffany, we can't thank you enough for coming on the program to talk about shoe innovation. Welcome to the Shoe In Show. Uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Cool. So I, you and I talked offline a little bit, and I was telling you my dad, who's been on the show when right. we talked about uh, shoes that veterans wear and, right. and those who in Vietnam, you know, and he he was a Harrier pilot, and when he I, I had him put these on a couple weeks ago, and he put them on, the look on his face was like a kid at Christmas. I had never seen my dad, he's seventy, do that, and I just think the innovation in these pairs, these these types of shoes, and the Hyperdap in particular. Is unbelievable. And Tiffany, I know when these came out, you were all over the place in media, Wired Magazine, the Today Show, all over the place. But um, but want to kind of, before we get down, go down that road, want to hear your shoe story and talk to us more about how you got to Nike, how you got involved in this pro- process. And and uh, and then maybe we can dive into more of kind of the rollout of the Hyperdap and all the things that went into that. Yeah, sure. So I, um, you know, I, I got a plastics engineering technology degree from Penn State, and I, I grew up playing sports. I would have loved to dream to work at Nike, but I had never really thought it was a possibility for me. I, I just didn't, I didn't realize that plastics and shoes made so much sense. And so uh, I, I found myself at Rubbermaid uh, designing boxes. Oh, uh, boring. Were- <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Food, trash, or... Uh, <laughs> storage it was a box and um i decided like okay let's let's shoot for the moon here like where could i go work and i applied online at nike and i got the job actually so i started as a um, airbag designer at nike's um ihm at the time and uh, i spent a year doing that and then i got into nike innovation kitten because they liked my plastics degree i guess uh-huh. and um it's all history from there. I mean, it, it spent 13 years until last summer um, working in Nike's Innovation Kitchen. That's so cool. And it, when people think about footwear and innovation, I think Nike's at the top of everyone's of everyone's minds, and has been for so many years. And I've I've had a chance to be in the in the uh, IHM, and I've I've not been in the kitchen, but I hear amazing things. And as you think through kind of your journey into the organization, and and uh, and when I guess Tinker or someone else came to you and said, "Hey, we need to we need to build a product that that replicates or somehow um, latches on to the technology that it was in uh, Back to the Future 2, What's going through your mind at that point? How how do you think about uh, critically think about approaching a project like that? <laughs> I mean, I was that was like that was in like 2005, and I was so naive to how shoes were made. I was just like, sure, yeah, let's make this like. Uh, I had no idea how to do it at a time. And then, and then I just slowly broke down each problem one at a time. Like, you know, what are we trying to do? How, how does it have to work? How does it have to work on the consumer? You know, what are they going to think of it? How are they going to interact with it? 
and just slowly break down each problem and start solving and move forward. Um, it was a fascinating, very long, very, very long process. <laughs> I bet. I bet. And what was kind of the culmination? What was that one moment where you're like, you know what? I think, I think I got it. I think we're well on our way. Or, or where were some of the down times where you're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off. Um, oh man, there was tons of downtime. A majority of the time was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this off. But, um, <laughs> but there was, I specifically remember one, one run where I was testing a pair of shoes and I was using an, an, a, it was a Nike watch at the time that could control your iPhone and it could, tr- it could control the audio. So it could turn it up or turn it down. And I was using that to control the shoe on a wear test. Cool. And uh, so I could tighten it and loosen it. Well, it started pouring in the middle of this run. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. And I'm really far from home. And so I just used it to tighten up the laces. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's it. Like, that's so amazing. Uh-huh. Like, on the fly, you can tighten it without touching it. It's amazing. So that was kind of when it was like, we got to do this. Like, this is performance. So Interesting. Yeah, because you would think, you know, it'd just be kind of a – when you look at the shoe and you think about the movie, you just think, oh, this is some kind of like like little kind of fad to it. But really, the application when you come up with a shoe like this can be used in all types of other products, shoe products. And it and I feel like sometimes innovation sparks innovation. I mean, what what, what do you think about that as, in terms of an idea once, you know, and I'm sure – uh, many of us haven't been in the Nike kitchen, but I imagine it's kind of a free flow of ideas where people are talking to each other about different things they're working on and it's spurring on other ideas. Yeah, absolutely. You you actually just see it every day in life. Like when you have a conversation, you have an idea and someone builds upon it, right? Like as right. long as you're open to other people building on your ideas, like it, it of course, it, it just magnifies, it makes it that much better. And yeah, for sure, this, this shoe came about this technology came out of a lot of people building on a lot of people's ideas that's that's for sure let me ask you this the original design from the 1985 movie i believe i read in the wired magazine profile when you guys were first rolling out the hyper depths was that you know there was wires connected to michael j fox's shoes and they ran under the delorean and people were controlling it was there anything from the prior design that you used for the current design were there or was it just kind of all you were looking at was the silhouette and the colorways to match up when you were doing the mag for charity? Um, and was any of that carried over to the hyperdab? What's kind of the the relationship between the original pair from '85 and then the pair, the mags, and then the hyperdabs today? Well, electronics have come so far since 1985 that uh, the only thing I could say that was probably literally shared and a better version of it was the LEDs that are in there. There's LEDs in all the shoes. That's probably the only commonality. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else has been upgraded and improved based on current technology. So, uh, yeah, there, there's not a lot. I mean, yeah, Michael J. Fox had two huge battery packs in his back pocket, <laughs> right? And he had to flip those switches on to turn just the lights on in the shoe. I mean, you couldn't run auto laces with a battery back then. There was no way. Yeah. I mean, unless Scott. you carried like... <laughs> unless, unless you carried like two car batteries i mean it wouldn't happen <laughs> that's crazy and so you know what's really cool about that is that you know, some people followed it but you guys released a limited edition of the mags that went to charity to help raise money for uh, michael j fox's parkinson's foundation um i've seen obviously on your instagram and some other things kind of the year you had as you were rolling that out and you're rolling out the hyper dab you know, what was that? Was that kind of the, the height of, of the launch of, of this program? And is, you know, kind of what are your thoughts on that year where you're really kind of running on all on all cylinders and, and unleashing this innovation on the industry that we hadn't seen yet? Oh, that was a that was a crazy year. I mean, in addition to that, I was running a children's charity for oh a, a racing group. So I, I like uh, I've way too much that year that's why i'm taking a break now right Um, (laughs) Right. but no it was amazing like when you work so hard on a product like it's very scary when you launch it for me it was very scary because like okay real people outside berm are going to see this now yeah like let's see what they really think and say because you know a lot of times like you just keep having the similar conversations internally and it's like oh my gosh are they going to react 
same way. Right. Um, luckily, the reaction was way better than way bigger. The people loved it. It was it was truly amazing, and I think they got the idea of the potential of the technology like that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a ton of potential, and I think that. Um, right now, you know, the, 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 the price points are kind of elevated, as we all know, because the new technology. But my hope is that there'll continue to be innovation in the space to, so that it's even more accessible to more people uh, and just becomes kind of a way of life, like an eyelet or laces when they originally were launched um, or set out there. And Nike, you know, we were, we were talking to a materials d- uh, developer and just looking at even the Nike print, where the the fly print, where they're printing, they're 3D printing up different components to go into the upper now, not just the midsole and an outsole technology. So I just feel like we're in this renaissance period for for innovation and development. So I, you know, this is just one of the. I mean, all the work that you put into that is kind of the foundation for the continued improvement of technology within the industry. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of brands doing a lot of cool things right now. Like it, it's pretty fascinating to watch. Like I love it because we all benefit from all these brands involving their technologies. Like we get more comfortable products and longer wearing products. And it's just, I love it. It's great. That's cool. Let me talk to, let me pivot to life after Nike. Um, you now have a YouTube channel and uh, just recently you posted up kind of a, a grudge match between the Epic React and the Ultra Boost that was uh, as detailed and has already got 53,000 people who've watched it. So you're starting to put yourself out there in kind of sneaker land, which we all like to hang out in. I love kind of the sneaker culture on social media. Tell me about your thinking about kind of the next step for you, Tiffany, and, and how you're going to interact in the industry and what your take is and, and what's your kind of your plan of action as you continue to engage with this industry we all love. Um, well, I, I, kind, I really don't have a plan right now. I, I started the YouTube channel because I wanted to explore all the brands and see all their best products and see all their technologies and kind of study them and show people how I looked at shoes through like a more technical perspective. And uh, it's taken off a little bit more than I was thinking it would. So um, that's a little stressful, but um, (laughs) (laughs) it's been super fun and fascinating uh, to look at these different shoes and kind of study them and then see people's reactions to my videos. Uh, that grudge mask was so just planned to be kind of fun. They're yeah. both amazing shoes. They're amazing <laughs> technologies. Like the whole point is they tied. Like I don't like a tie. Right. So I, I forced myself to pick one and people obviously didn't like that, but, right. um, you know, it's super cool to see where all the, all the companies are going and, and evolving technology. And it, it just feels like the technology and shoes is moving so much faster now than it has in the last two and it's just super cool to see the quality and the different materials that are being used. And I feel like a kid in a candy store, honestly. Like, it's it's super cool. I've never bought so many shoes in my life. And it's just, it's just wild right now. It's a wild west for me a little bit. Hey, Tiffany, let me let me ask you a little bit about a culture of innovation. Um, we see all, a lot of new technologies that... I feel like we're almost in a, in a golden age of technology where things are becoming so efficient through technology, um, but also cost effective where people can actually afford to purchase technology that, that they can integrate and use in different things um, throughout, you know, a design process like 3D design or 3D printing to, you know, sales channels and different technologies that, that retailers may be using. But in terms of in terms of just kind of thought leadership on innovation, what should companies be thinking about um, when, when, you know, when they come to innovation? And, and I asked that because some things you've said really kind of percolated in my mind. One of those was um, you, you almost have to have this, um, this mindset of, uh, you know, it's not just the critical thought to come up with the next idea, but it's allowing someone to add to it and not being offended that someone, someone did that um, or, you know, do, do, you know, not everyone can afford the amount of money that Nike puts into innovation or has like a kitchen where they can do it. What are some ideas that you think about when you can go to a company and say, okay, maybe you don't have the kind of capital to spend on this, but here's some ideas for how you can change your mind to think a little bit differently. Um, what would you say to a company who's, who, who is thinking about doing that, but doesn't know where to start? 
Oh man, I would I would say start start with the technologies that you love. Like like take knit for example. These knit uppers that are on the Adidas shoes, Prime knit, and then Nike's fly knit. Like it's beautiful. The shaping, the fit, everything is so amazing. And you you got to keep in mind that those vendors that are helping them, they they also probably want to make more things and and patents and things run out. So you kind of just have to be a little savvy right. to when this technology like is is changing and moving and when you can get a hold of it. And it's interesting because you can have the same artist all use the exact same materials and come up with 10 different amazing things. It's really the same with shoe technology. I mean, shoes have been cut and sew with leather and synthetics and fabric mixed and woven since the, since it started being made. Right. And they've, there's so many different varieties. So you can take the same technologies and spin it your own way and, pull together a brand new innovation. Like I just think there's so much opportunity to innovate, especially with all these new technologies coming out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, I think that's so, that's so true and it's almost difficult to keep up with. I feel like every other day, one of the brands is dropping on us some really sexy YouTube video. That's got things dipped in 3d printing and liquid this and flying at that. And, and so to me, it's, it's, I mean, I, it just is such a cool time to be a sneakerhead. I grew up in the age, I was born in the late 70s, grew up in the age of the Air Jordan um, and many of Tinker's, uh, Tinker Hatfield's different designs. And and uh, and just think back then, I thought these were like the coolest things ever, but it's been even so much more advanced since that time from folks like you. And, and that's why we think through kind of your next steps. You've put yourself out there. You talked about your videos blowing up and stuff like that's got to be interesting because even when you were unveiling the Hyperdapt um, as the designer and as the innovator stepping out into the public eye to be to put yourself out there, it's, it's got to be a humbling experience as you talked about. But there's got to be so much more. Um, how do I say this? It's so much more kind of uh, confirmation that what you're working on and what your talents are and, and, and your abilities have been kind of reconfirmed by how the marketplace has received you. And my hope is that as you do this, whatever the next phase is in your in your career, that you continue to kind of receive that feedback. Because as just in the few videos you've already posted, we've already seen a lot of great people. People know you, right? They know you because you're an innovator and an iconic shoe that's our, that just came out. So I think that uh, and I think that's an awesome opportunity for you. Yeah, and I think the part that sometimes even I forget about is I'm learning way more than, you know, probably other people that are watching this happen. Like, I'm learning how consumers respond to certain ways shoes are presented. I'm learning, like, I am literally probably writing pages and pages of things that I'm learning every day from posting these videos and making them. And and so it's, it's pretty fascinating, like, to look at it through this lens of a consumer's eye, like, how, how do you go out and buy a sneaker? Like, how do you find the best sneaker for you at the right price? Like, it's a mess. Yeah. I, like, I have no idea. It's like, <laughs> it depends on what you're Googling when you're Googling it. Like, it's amazing. It's so hard to find. It's so hard to sift through everything. It is. I've got to stay off my Twitter feed or the FDRA Twitter feed because I see something and I freaking click on it. And next thing you know, I've spent $150 and two days later I get this awesome pair of shoes, but it just keeps happening over and over again. And Andy rolls his eyes and my wife looks at the credit card bill and it's just, this is not, I mean, it's, and it's good Jasmine's for the trying them out in the office and Matt's not there exactly. walking around in them. <laughs> so, I, you know, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's just a cool, there's so much selection out there right now. And I just think when I first walked into a foot locker, when I was a kid, I always brought my dad because he would be the one who who'd fund the the Jordan habit, and you know they had the headboard that was signed above the register by your local athletes, mm-hmm. and you had the color, and you sent the guy or the gal to the back to gather you know the shoes, and they came out. Do they have your size? Would would dad you know would he foot the bill? And and now it's just like that was like that was an event to go, and now that's constantly on my phone, right? Well, I fit the bill. Well, they have my size, and you have access to so many different colorways and choices it's just unbelievable yeah it's amazing and even like the shoes that sell out fast like you've got you literally have like 10 seconds to decide if you're buying this or not and then and if you don't it's gone and even if you do sometimes it's still you don't get it like yeah there's a lot of pressure 
um, like from so many different areas on so many different products. It's amazing. I know the sneaker app, Tiffany, it's, it's like a heroin hit. I get in there and they're going to drop a new colorway on the hyper dab. I'm like, oh, I don't want to so that's a lot of money. I'm gonna, and I'm like, okay, it's like, it's like this, oh, I'll put my name in and you know, I probably won't get it. And then, then you get a notification. Oh, you won. You got it. Or, you know, a lot of times I don't win the raffle, but these raffles and limited edition just drives kind of the fever that we're all feeling. Um, and I think there's also, as you know, as you well know, the professional collector undercurrent that's altering the economics of the industry, whether it's bots or it's other or people are just reselling to resell the stock X's of the world. Um, so that's just like a whole different thing that's driving how we purchase shoes And I guess back to my point on the innovation side, my hope is that someday that this technology will be even more uh, democratized and accessible across the, across the industry so that people can really have access to it. Yeah, I would agree. I'd love more um, it to be, I, I, what I love is everyone to have shoes that they really love and they fit well and they're really comfortable. Like I think people still a lot of times wear shoes that don't fit that well and are not that comfortable to them. Um, and I'd love them to be able to try them all on and, and figure out what is best. And I don't know if people even do that anymore. They, I think they just buy them for looks or collectability, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Hey, Tiffany, um, before we flip it over to, uh, to our, our famous segment where we're going to ask what you got, what you getting, <laughs> um, I have a, I have a question for you about how our industry is transforming. Um, and, um, I think for many, many years, we've heard a lot of analysts talk about Nike as a marketing company. You know, it sells product, but and inevitably they're they're so good at marketing what they have. So the product's good, yes, but the marketing has encouraged people in the whole conversation you guys just had about, you know, these limited releases and how they put it out and the channels and all that stuff and, and what they're doing. Do you think that uh, big athletic companies are moving from being marketing companies to being technology companies. And what I mean by that is I'm looking at Flyprint and I'm looking at Carbon that Adidas has been using. New Balance is, is used um, uh, a product uh, that was that was spun off by an MIT graduate that looks at um, a runner's uh, kind of pressure points on the shoe and then creates the midsole customized around those pressure points. Um, and then in other points where there's not so much of a, of a strike, uh, it leaves those areas a little bit more uh, open on the midsole. And then you add in the, the Nike fly print now where you can take uh, data from a person's uh, foot if you 3D scan it and you can take a look not at just where their strike is, but how their 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 foot on the top is is structured and then how they run in it. And so I'm just wondering, as we collect more data, not on just people, how their shopping habits in stores are online and where they're looking, but their actual feet data, are we are we transforming into technology companies that are using this data to make better shoes and moving beyond even what we've been in the past? What do you what do you think about that? That's a very complicated question. Yeah, I think it is. you know, my <laughs> my opinion just from my experience is like technology is amazing, right? And and shoes have been traditionally made by hand, right? right? right. Very manual, manual process. So they'd be silly not to look at some of this technology to improve it. The other thing is when you're making a shoe, which was really a challenge for me is people's feet are so different, right? Like so very different. Even your right and your left foot is different from each other. How do you make one product that works for both of those? And then millions of different ones. Like, like mm-hmm. that was a, a thing that the, uh, the hyper adapt address, like it tightens to a comfort fit that's custom for each person. It's just sensing attention. Right. And same thing like in my Boost versus React review, people feel those foams very differently. Right. Some people love Boost, some people don't. Some people love React and, you know, other than brand loyalty, which are very, very strong, but people just feel things differently. And how do you, as these brands, I think that's a challenge. Can they use technology to figure out that equation on how to make everybody comfortable right. and have a good fit, even though their feet are so wildly different and right. their feeling is so different. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Well, at this point, let's let's kick let's it. do it, man. Let's what you got? What, what you, you gonna got? get? What you gonna get? Jasmine, lead us off. <laughs> okay. Well, Tiffany, I want to ask you what you have on your feet right now, and what are you planning on getting in the future? Oh my gosh! Okay, uh, I actually have UGG 
slippers uh-huh. on right now. Right on. <laughs> I love it. She's honest. I love it. What color? Uh, they're gray. Okay. Um, I went to Australia a year ago, and I was like, I got to get some Uggs, right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a slipper review one of these days, so watch out for that. Very okay. important. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to get, I'm really interested in Reebok right now. Um, I haven't had Reebok since I was a kid, and so I think I'm going to get a pair of these float rides, liquid float ride. I mean, it sounds amazing. Yeah. Like, you're going to yeah. be... On liquid, but you're floating. Like <laughs> I'm in. Like I want to know what that feels like. <laughs> are, are these um, more like an athleisure kind of shoe? I think they're a running shoe that okay. Reebok has. Okay. I think they're for running. Yeah. Have you seen their? Yeah. They have a spring collection too that has like really bright colors, like a neon green, uh, like a bright pink, uh, with in, in collaboration with Tiana Taylor. I don't know if you've seen those, but those are definitely from the '90s of when they were popular. When I used to wear them as a kid too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen those. Those are definitely hot. I pro- I don't know if I can rock those. Me but, either. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're very bright. They're for a particular person, <laughs> but they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy, brother, what what you got? What I got? Um, I have uh, the Boost, the Adidas uh-huh, Boost. Uh-huh. Um, I've worn those for quite a bit, so you I have. need to get I need to get a new pair of Athletic. Yep. Um, you know, I got a pair of Asics uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, the, the gel. Um, and they're actually super super comfortable. You like those? There's a lot. I mean, I, there's a lot of support to it. Yeah, uh, which I appreciate. And uh, I'll probably just get another pair of those because I'm just traditional like that. Yeah, I love it. Buy Tradition's like. good. Buy, <laughs> stick to what you like, what you know. Jasmine, what about you? Um, I have on a pair of All Stars, um, Converse on, and I think what I want to get might be a new pair of Adidas. Um, I need some like walk around shoes. Yeah, uh, for need the summer or want. Yeah, need. Yeah, okay. Shoes are a necessity. So I think I need something for, there's a lot of festivals that I'm going to this year. So I need some stuff that I can stay in for about eight, nine hours and my feet don't, are not killing me. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. All right. I've been waiting a long time to say this. I got <laughs> me some hyper dabs, yeah, damn it. Finally. Right. Way to go. I've been saying it for so many shows on what you got, what you're going to get. People are tired of it. My next pickup are probably the Nike Epic Reacts Fly Knit. They look awesome. I love the Fly Knit Upper. Uh, the outsole looks so cushiony, um, and I'm trying to get back into running as, as things are thawing out. So that's probably my next go-to. The next time I'm in, we're going to do a, a shoe through in Portland, and I'll probably swing by the uh, employee store and pick some up. Right so. on. Right on. Well, folks, uh, Tiffany, thank you so yeah, much. This was for awesome. Us. Thanks for letting us geek out with you. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. This was fun. Awesome. Folks, this is Shoe In. We're covering all things of footwear. Uh, today's uh, focus was on uh, innovation uh, and especially the uh, the hyper adapt. Uh, and uh, as always, you can find us on shoeinshow.com. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Uh, if you have ideas uh, for, for topics of shows you'd like to hear about or guests you'd like to hear from, let us know. Uh, we try to talk to a wide assortment of people in the industry as Matt continues to make his shoelaces uh Un, un, uh, I don't know. Untighten, he tightens tighten. and tightens him <laughs> as he slow, slowly wears down his battery. <laughs> uh, until next time, folks, uh, for, for Matt, Jasmine, I'm Andy Polk, and Shoein is out. Shoein has been brought to you by the FDRA, the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.